there are different ways to uh, manage the airway and the use of the light stalet is one of them. The light stalet uh, or light wand is an alternative I'm just for, uh, yeah. Yeah. intubation and uh, very simple. There are different brands of light stalets and the one we chose here is a very common one. An important issue is to keep the stalet very well lubricated and I prefer non uh, water soluble lubricants so they don't dry up. Uh, once we place the lattice through the endotracheal tube to uh, be careful enough to allow the tip of the lattice only to protrude uh, a few millimeters, quarter of an inch uh, or so. Also we have to make sure to secure the most proximal portion of the endotracheal tube to the lattice or lattice wand to prevent it from uh, being uh, pushed in or withdraw. Um, too far, so that keeps uh, the cellets more stable. The final issue is to do the appropriate bend of the end of the wand, uh, approximately five centimeters or six centimeters of the uh, stalet should be bent to 110 uh, degrees or so um, to allow an uh, easier uh, introduction. Once we're set up, we're going to do some mannequin demonstration of the technique couple things of importance is to make sure we stay at the head of the bed, although from the side it can be done. We should test our stalet, uh, make sure light works appropriately, dim the light uh, of the room, and uh, use a uh, non-dominant hand, preferably, to uh, pull the jaw up. So we introduce the thumb into the patient's mouth. Uh, and uh, by holding the jaw, we lift the jaw. That will allow the epiglottis to, uh, you know, detach from the back of the uh, oropharynx. Once we introduce the wand, uh, we can see how easy it is to transilluminate to the, the cheek. And by doing a scooping motion, we can see the left side of the neck being transilluminated. To so show the light one being too lateral, the right side of the neck being transilluminated. And now, by doing this scooping motion, we'll try to see until the light comes from the upper neck uh, into the lower, uh, into the trachea. And you can see this is a signal that the tip is beyond the uh, laryngeal inlet, the focal course. Now, once we obtain that, we slide the tube and then we withdraw the stylet from the endotracheal tube. This is a typical lighter one uh, intubation. We're gonna repeat this uh, one more time. Safety Get the keyless. Uh, I'm just uh, doing straight. something for Again, our setup, yeah. stylet in the tracheal tube and a non water uh, soluble uh, lubricant. This will allow an easy advancement of the tracheal tube over the stylet. We set up the tube for perfection. Again, making sure that the tip of the stylet only comes out a few millimeters, quarter inch uh, beyond the tip of the endotracheal tube. We then secure the most proximal portion of the endotracheal tube to prevent it from being uh, pushed in or pushed out and uh, also to prevent the stylet to protrude too far into the endotracheal tube and cause damage on the larynx. Finally, we do the appropriate bend of the uh, stylet to facilitate its entrance. Again, around uh, 110 or so degrees, 110, even sometimes a little more, 120 degrees. Somewhat like five centimeters from the uh, tip of the lighted stalet. Now that we're ready, we do the, make sure that our room's light are dim, that our one's light works properly. And again, using our preferred or non-dominant hand, we will open the mouth with a gentle pulling of the jaw to open the oropharyngeal and uh, upper laryngeal inlet and then place the stalet into the patient's mouth. Usually easier to do it from the side of the mouth, facilitates the entrance. See how well it transilluminate. Again, we show the left side of the neck. 
and then the right side of the neck. And then we're going to try to intubate the mannequin by putting the solid midline and trying to midline with the scooping motion until we see the light go through the laryngeal outlet into the lower trachea. Suprasternal notch area can strengthen illuminated. Sign that we are in the larynx. Notice that there was always light continuity from the top to the bottom uh, to the suprasternal notch. Once at that position, we dance in the tracheal tube and then we pull out the stalet. We're now going to demonstrate how the esophageal intubation with the lighted wand uh, looks like. Notice as we transilluminate that we lose transillumination. That's a key element. We should always keep uh, transmission to the neck. And then sometimes it can appear in the lower neck in a suprasternal area, but that's uh, not a sign that the, uh, you have to see the light go through from top to bottom of the neck. A loss of transillumination is a sign that the tube was in the proper position. We're going to show our laryngoscopy now how the tube should look on a good intubation. You can see the retinoids right in the back and the ventricular tube in position. And then another view of a patient with an esophageal intubation. You can see the laryngeal inlet in the top and then the endotracheal tube around you know, the seven hour and the very bottom of the view. Now we're going to do a live demonstration to patients. There are patients for open heart surgery who, for demo purposes, we did it under general anesthesia. This patient has been already anesthetized. Once our uh, one, uh, it's uh, ready with the tracheal tube couple, well lubricated. This patient's have been induced. Yeah, still lights off. And uh, we're using, again, this uh, assistance uh, the left yeah, as a right. non-dominant hand. We forgot to turn on the light, but we turn on the light of the light of one second. We dim the room's light. And then we lift the jaw. And we start by doing a scooping I'm motion. Sure the how it looks to the, side. to the top of the laryngeal inlet or the entrance of the laryngeal inlet, but still not okay. good enough. It's that we have to go to almost a half of the Speak neck. A Sometimes it gets caught in the glossopiglotic fold, so we have to pull, you know, Rose, you withdraw and start so again with a scooping motion okay, thank you, thank you. until we see oh, okay. translimination continuing to okay. the neck. You can there see it right there. there. This Sometimes you see the so-called so sausage sign as you advance it to the translimination propagates to the suprasternal notch. Very clear sign that this uh, tube is inside the trachea. Now the patient's been intubated, tube advanced, stylet removed, connected breathing circuit, and ventilated. We're going to show our endoscopic view of the not that clear of the tube in the end. Oh, 200 over 87. I guess that's where she came in. Not a perfect view. Hopefully good enough. Second patient, a uh, little bit bigger patient, uh, uh, again, patient for open heart surgery, pull up our jaw to the ceiling, and we start with our scooping motion. You can see even a patient, clearly the air transformation is seen, in, and we continue our scooping motion until where a light comes in the middle portion of the neck and then it, it diffuses into the suprasternal notch. Clear sign that now you're below, below the laryngeal inlet vocal cords, as in the tracheal tube, draw our stylet, and play the cuff, connect to the breathing circuit, and now we're going to see uh, how uh, the monitor oh, no, surgical the delay. entitled CO2 and bilateral breast sounds. I'm waiting for you. I hope you enjoy this video, and uh, if you have any questions, my email address is at the end.